Hello, God bless you guys. Well, today is the day that I will be sharing my testimony. And just to um, warn you guys, um, I will be talking about very, very um, disturbing things. And the reason why is because I want to be very transparent about what I've been through. Um, and many people don't speak about this because it is a hard situation to even like, um, like have to talk about it. But I feel like God has been putting in my heart so much. And I even made a video before this one that I'm making right now. I did make a video. But I was like all over the place, you know. And I just like, okay, I just need to like stay focused on what I was going to say. Then I said, maybe it's not the time to share it. But then afterwards, I was just going through, um, you know, YouTube. And I bump into this um, testimony of this girl that she had been to she had been through molestation um as a child and unfortunately she has not um found peace and um unfortunately like she went through another path that i could have easily went through so i'm not gonna judge her and i'll be praying but, so this is the reason why i'm sharing okay so many people go through some type of sexual abuse they don't talk about it because of shame and guilt and they feel disgusting and um because i've been through that those are real feelings and um i was dealing with shame guilt for oh my gosh like um well since i was a kid to i was 26 25 okay so let me start off well as a child, I really didn't get to have like, like the perfect, you know, um, childhood, and I, I, I agree that not many people have experienced like such a wonderful childhood, you know, and I started getting molested at a very young age, probably like at the age of six, and um, that's like guess I could remember, well, um, and. The thing is, you don't understand what's going on with you when you, you're a baby. You know, like you don't you don't understand what's going on. What are they doing to you? You start getting older. You start sensing like I remember, like around the age of seven, I started sensing like something's not right. And I would say, um, I don't like what you're doing. And they'll be like, um, if you, cause there was several people, like more than five or six. I don't even want to count, but, um. They'll tell you, like, um, if, if you tell your parents, they're going to get you in trouble. If you tell someone, they're not going to believe you. And you believe it. You truly believe it. And, um, or they start putting guilt over you, like, oh, if you tell me, I'm going to go to jail. And just, like, and you start getting scared, you know, because you, because as a kid, you know, that fear and whatever is going on with you at that time, it feels like, like such a big deal, you know. It's a real fear and a very big fear that it kind of, like makes you believe what they're saying um so then i started realizing that it was not okay and i remember like as a little kid like we'll be watching like um soap operas i don't know how they're called novelas in spanish but people would be kissing and um or like rubbing on each other and and my mom would be like oh you can't see this and i'll be like why not like you know this person does it to me, you know, in my head, you know, I'm thinking. So I knew it was wrong because when things like that would come out on TV, um, it was like my mom, because my dad wasn't wasn't around. So my mom wouldn't let me see it. So that was kind of like an in indicator, this is wrong. So then I was introduced to porn at a very young age, like around, you know, same age, like seven, eight. And I would have to sit down with this person that had done this. Well, let me just say before I start, I'm not doing this video so then I could get like just like a party of like a pity party or um, so people could feel bad for me because God has already delivered me from that. I don't look my I don't look at myself as a victim. I look at myself as a victor and more than a conqueror, you know, because God was with me even though. Um, at that time, I, I was afraid and I felt lonely, but God showed me, you know, I was there with you. And I'll explain why later. Okay, so back. Um, 
so I would have to watch this porn and it was like you know back in the days like it wasn't like you could not just get like a phone or whatever it was just like a magazine so I started getting those pictures in my mind at a very young age and I would have to perform what I saw to that person and I felt disgusted I felt like you know still didn't know the how bad it was but at that point I was like this is this something's like kind of off and um, at a very young age, that opened the door for me to be promiscuous, for me to be per have a some type of perversion or have perversion uh, mentality. And so that caused me some trouble, you know, growing up because, um, you know, like I had little girlfriends, you know, like little friends, and I would tell them, oh, let's do this and let's do that. And unfortunately, I opened the doors to that perversion in their lives at a very young age. You know, we were at the same age, seven, eight, nine, and going on. So then um, when I was like, I had a, I had like a, a realization that when I was with the girl, I would feel like there was no, nothing wrong was going on because, you know, I didn't feel like scared of the girls. I wasn't scared of no, uh, no girls, only guys. Like I was very scared. So then it opened the door for um, me to start falling into um, like that lustful be behaviors with girls. And, um, I would just look at the faces and I, I, I believe that the people that did do this to me didn't agree on that they were doing this to me, you know, they they just did it. Like they, I think, I believe it was a generational curse. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of my family, like, um, you know, my mom, my grandma and so on, they've been through something like this, you know? So then, um. Or, or worse, you know, so they, so the people that did harm to me, I mean, it would happen just anywhere, you know, like, like, you know, at home, you know, with the family, you know, at the babysitter's house, and that started, ha like, I had fear, like, so much fear, like, when people would get close to me, I didn't know why they were getting close to me, I was, but right away, like, my mind was thinking, you know, they want to do something to me. So then um, I grew up with this sense of fear. I, like, literally, I could not sleep with the light off. Um, I could not, I could not go to the restroom with it, like, like the door being closed. And um, I just had constant fear, you know. So then, um, because that had already, like, snuck into me, like, this sense of fear, I was always cautious of being around people. I could not be happy. Like, just hanging out with, like, family because I didn't know if it was going to happen or not. And But then again, the other side of me was I was already, like, acting, like, like I was already, like, acting, um well, promiscuous. So then I would want to do that. And, um, but not with the people that would hurt me, but with the kids that were my age. And I know this is, like, very disturbing, you know. But I have to talk about it because it's like the honest truth what happened. So then, um, um, having friends at school, I would be like, you know, like, oh, there's a, there's a lot of kids, like, believe it or not, there's a lot of kids that play the, the disgusting game of mommy and daddy. Like, they, you know, like, um, they get in the room or whatever, or they're playing around and they play that. And most of them... Why they do that is because they've been exposed to some type of sexual abuse, and especially as a kid. And you could see, moving on. Um, I think the, the saddest part was, like, I confided in adults, and they did nothing. They did not help me at all. I don't know what was it in them that they didn't believe me, or I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened, but, yeah, I... I I wasn't helped so that made me more afraid because I'm thinking now I'm thinking I tell the people what's going on with me they 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 don't do anything and then the person that's doing harm to me they're telling me if you tell someone they're not gonna believe you if you tell someone they're gonna get you in trouble if you tell someone I'm gonna say that you liked it so you're gonna get in trouble so then that's so then my thoughts were like now say nothing because you nothing's gonna get done you know um and unfortunately, that happens in many cases. That's why kids don't even talk about it. And there's kids that don't even talk about it at all. Like, they'll go through a lifetime without telling anyone just because of the shame, the guilt. And, you know, that's that's not the way 
that we can deal with it, you know? You won't recover from that if you never lay it down on the table and be like, you know, got to deal with it, you know, it's going to be painful, but at, at the end of the day, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to feel better, right? So then, um, growing up in my teenager years, um, I was bisexual and I would be constantly having, um, boyfriends and not really, not like having sexual relations with them, but still like, or, and I had girlfriends and then I would like, um, just be like, again, like very lustful and, um, be just, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't know how to say it, but I felt like I had to prove when someone said, oh, you're so beautiful. I felt like I had to give them something, you know, like, I don't know. That's how I felt. And, um, growing up, you feel like this is just, you know, like you're only good for, like being like a sexual object. I don't know. You know, that's how I grew up thinking. And um, when I started thinking back of everything that had happened to me and what I had been through, I felt like disgusted, you know, because, you know, some people were family and you just feel like this disgusting feeling. And I'm not doing it to bash anyone either, you know, because I have forgiven, but we have to talk about it. So then um, other people could... um be helped by this and you know like don't feel guilty for something that someone else did to you you know and um I remember like at night time just telling God like just do not let me get raped do not let me get raped Lord do not let me get raped um I knew there was a God but I just didn't know you know like I just asked him like you know I'm like Father God, you know, like, that's all I knew. And I just, I would cry at night, and I'm like, I don't want to get raped. And one of the persons that would molest me, they wouldn't go to work, I believe, because I would be at my house, and then my brothers would be in their rooms. And then, um, you know, my mom had to go to work, and that person will leave out of their house really early in the morning, go to our house, and go inside my bed, and then just, you know, do whatever he would do, and then go back home, you know? Then there was a time that he had went, he had left, I mean, he had came to the house and then um, he had pulled me out of the bed and took me into the restroom and um, to the bathroom and he was about to rape me. But thank God that he didn't. He didn't get a chance to because I started crying, screaming, and my brother had woken up. And to this day, he doesn't know that. And then... um. Then another time, one of my family members, you know, around this time, it was like a big chaos going around, which was like, there was just like family drama. And then, so then my mom had to like leave right away and she, she left, um, out of uh, my family member's house and, um, she was like, I don't know what had happened, but she left out, 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 out of nowhere. I stayed in that family member's house and that person decided to like take me to the room and, put my pants down and was going to rape me and I was like maybe like seven and um I remember saying no please don't please do not do this and I even said like you have you have a wife you know like do it do it to your wife and then um he's like no I no no I need I need to do it to you and like I remember looking back like the door was open and um I just looking back and then I could hear someone like pulling up because the door for the door to the bedroom was open and the door to the to the going inside the house was open only the the thing that was open i mean closed was the screen door but i mean you could hear so then um the person stopped and then i ran started crying and then my mom came inside the house and she's like why are you crying and then the person's all like oh because she was playing with my with my with my radio and i don't like no one touching it and then um so then my mom got me in trouble, and so then I, that, that's what it stayed at, you know, and I didn't say anything because I was so scared. So then, um, um, you know, like, that's one of the other things I didn't get raped, so thank the Lord, you know, thank the Lord that he always took care of me. And now saying, now addressing why I feel like, um, you know, not feeling why I know God was with me, many people might ask, and I was one of them, I would scream to God. Lord, why do kids get raped? 
Lord, why does bad things happen? Like, tell me why. I need to know why. And I didn't get it. For so many years, I did not get it. And then, um, till recently, um, God told me, it's like, well, it's not that I'm... It's the people that have the, the evil in their hearts. To, they intend to do evil. They they go and do what they love, you know. Many people say, um, you know, like, just let people do what they love. Well, guess what? There's people that love to get to to be um, mole child molesters. There's people that love raping. There's people that love killing. You know, just because they love it doesn't mean it's right. So then, um, they they do what's evil. They their heart is full of wickedness, and then they um disobey what the word of God says. And the word of God says that you should not hurt children. You know, do not um shed innocent blood. But they don't do that. They rather do what's evil. They rather do what what brings them like pleasure. And then a lot of people, you know, are just full of wickedness. And I'm like, I started understanding, you know, we have a free will to choose to do whatever we want to do. For example, you could either go and with your hands help someone that's in need and and is hungry and you go and use your hands to go feed them you know or you could just get a gun and then shoot someone you have that will and many people choose to do what's wrong choose to do what's bad choose to do what's evil so then i started understanding oh okay now i get it and then um but you might think how is that how is that making me feel better right because that's the same thing I would think. Oh boy, how does that make me feel better? Well, um, we could either wish bad on them, wish death on them, but it won't make you feel any better. It won't make you feel any better. Um, you know, you're still dealing with that anger, that bitterness, that hatred. And um, at the end of the day, it's just going to make you very, very bitter. And God says on Romans twelve nineteen, it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Many of the people that did bad to me, um, they had a very horrible death, you know. And it's not because they did that to me, you know. I had nothing to do with it. It didn't make me feel any better. It did not bring any closure to me. It didn't make me any feel any better. What did start helping me be healed was forgiveness. Forgiving them. Crazy, right? Well, it actually did help. It really did help. When I started forgiving them, you know, for what they had done, I started feeling this sense of freedom. I was re releasing all, all this, like, heavy loads of just anger, bitterness, shame, guilt, I started giving it to God, you know, and it wasn't just like that, but I mean, I feel like for some people it could be like that, but I just started releasing them, releasing, 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 and God started helping me because through forgiveness comes healing, right, and God says that we don't forgive, we also won't be forgiven, and Forgiveness doesn't mean I accept what you did to me and I love what you did to me. It doesn't mean that. Forgiveness means I'm choosing to let go of this that's hurting me because holding on to it is just as worse. It's just as bad as like them doing it to you because you're reliving it, reliving it, reliving it, taking it in, taking it in every day that you think about it. It's just like, you know, like it's just like a like a wound and you're just throwing salt at, at it. And I know it might be like thinking, okay, it's so easy for you to tell tell me this, Karina, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. It's it's what happened to me in my case, and I believe um, it could be the same for you, you know? And the forgiveness is not for the weak, it's for the strong, you know? So, again, you saying, I forgive you, doesn't mean that it's, you're okay with it, that you, that you agree with it. It just means I choose today. Not to be holding on to something that's going to keep on hurting me. And even when you say, like, you honestly feel like, I don't feel like saying, I forgive this person. Trust me, you can be honest with God. 
he knows exactly what you're feeling. And he knows what you're going to tell him before you even say it. So just say it, you know, like just say it and God will help you. He will heal you. He will um make you free from all that that you're carrying. And, you know, let's see. I started, you know, being molested at the age of six. By the age of 25, I was still dealing with it. And then by this time, obviously, I'm married. And I had brought that into my marriage. And then there was many times that I was just very... I would reject my husband. I'd be like, no, 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 no. I just don't want you. Don't touch me. You, you know. And he knew what I had been through. So he was very understanding. Thank God he was very understanding. But it was causing a lot of turmoil in my in my marriage. You know, because we have to be, obviously, like okay with being close to that person but you're, if, if you're rejecting them they're going to be like what's the matter you know but I told my husband what had happened and I told him and there was things that would trigger it too you know like certain words and um by all means you know my husband's very respectful towards me he always treated me with respect he still does res um, respect me um but there was just certain things that were said like not bad things but just like a trigger you know and I would just be like, that's it. Like, I would get away. And um, I'll get angry. So, I'm very grateful that I was released from that. Because that helped my marriage a ton. A lot. So then, you know, you start letting that into your marriage. So like you care Some people have carried it for 20, 25 years. All their lives, honestly. They feel this guilt. Like I said, there's people that actually have, um, res like, their abuse has made them fall into, like, drug addiction. Um, some people, like the girl that I was telling you about, the testimony, she went into prostitution because she thought she was not worthy of true love. And she's the age of 28, and she still says that she doesn't know what love is. I think, no, never mind, 32. And she still doesn't know what love is. She says she's never felt love from a man. And oh, it just breaks my heart for her. And it breaks my heart because it could have easily been, been me, you know. So I thank God that, that it wasn't. But then again, I don't judge her because, you know, this this is like a real issue, you know, like. When you get molested, when you get sexually abused, especially at a very young age, it does damage. It does damage to your to your to your mind, you know, emotionally, spiritually, you know, it does something to you. And I could say that God healed me from that. Like I could say God healed me from that. I don't feel sorry for myself anymore. I don't feel this guilt. I don't feel this disgust anymore. Um, you know, I had let it all go, you know. He helped me. So then, this girl, she has not come out of it. And I'm, I can only pray for her. And I, I wish I knew her her um, email or her social media or something to reach out to her, you know. But it was just like a video that she did. Like someone that, I don't know who recorded her. But, yeah. Um, and... What was that? I wouldn't say. So going back to, you know, growing up, this that had happened to me, the first time that I tried to kill myself was at the age of 16. A lot of things were running through my mind. You are not loved. You are disgusting. Nobody loves you, you know, especially the nobody loves you part. And nobody could have protected you. And I was thinking, maybe if I had my dad in my life, maybe they would have said, you know what? I cannot touch this child because her father will kill me. Or something like that, you know? Just, you know, sense of protection. But my father couldn't be in my life. And, you know, but my father, God, did help me. So, glory to him. And, um, I had taken 16 pills that day. I remember like 16, 17 pills. And 
my when at the time one of my sister in laws had walked in and I was just crying, crying, like what what's going on? I'm like I I, I wanna kill myself. I don't wanna be alive and um I literally just wanna sleep and it, not, nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. I didn't throw up, nothing happened. And I think it was like, you know, God protecting me because it was not my time to go. Then again, at the age of 18, I tried to kill myself again. I remember I was in my mom's car. Just She was at work. But I was inside her car in the backyard and just thinking about it, thinking about it. Like, I really want to do it. I really want to do it. And just crying, 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 and crying. And obviously, I would, I would talk to God. And at that time, too, I felt like maybe God doesn't love me either, you know? Just these thoughts that come, like, they're straight from the enemy, you know? They'll make you believe no one loves you. You're not worthy. And I remember just thinking, thinking, and I'm like, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And literally, just like this peace came over me. I stopped crying. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go eat. And just, you know, didn't think about it. So, um, what else? There's a movement going on right now that says save our children because there's a lot of people that are being molested, a lot of people, a lot of kids are being raped, killed, and you know, when I see stories of kids, you know, like it's just it breaks my heart and I'm just like, I just sometimes I don't even want to read it because it's just, I don't, I rather just pray for them and and not, not really let it get to me so much, and and. Like, I just get angry, and then I just, you know, I'd rather just pray. And um, God God is going to take, he's gonna, He's the avenger. He is going to repay everyone that had been, that has done wicked things to children. Because, you know, the children belong to God, you know. And, let's see. i seen this video of this man that he has, a very rich man. He has pictures of kids. In his, like they're in display in his home. The kids are tied up. They look scared. They're laying down in fear. And you know, as a part of the sexual abuse, I know that that is such a turn on to those perverted people. Like that, being afraid is something that it's kind of like they want to do it even more, you know. And I'm um, just so disturbing. Like it's just so disturbing. They love the, to make the kids fear so like you know like so i see the save the children thing i'm like yeah it's very you know very powerful um like saying you know but we do have to be praying for our children praying 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 is powerful you know it's just not like a this just wow like you know like god many people think Oh yeah, you just say something and then you automatically gonna feel better. No, like I'm like I'm serious. Like you pray to God and God will do something. He will move, you know. And He has done it in my life. Man, He healed me from so much. Like, and I don't say this like like as boasting, you know. But like, I'm boasting in Him. Yeah, of course, He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. But I'm saying in the way that, like. Just hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, perversion, um, hatred. It's just so much that he has um, healed me from. And um, let's see. I just want to say, again, God could deliver you from this baggage that you're carrying, that you don't have to carry. Forgiveness, forgiveness was the biggest key for my deliverance of all that I was carrying and I encourage you if you guys ever been to something share your testimony you know like I said I watched this I watched this video of this girl she didn't have a good outcome and I just pray that she that she has an encounter with Jesus I pray that she does. Because all she said was, I was molested at the age of 10, 11. I ran away from home at the age of 10 and 11. Started running away. I ended up in the streets being a prostitute. She has two kids. She lost them. There's no happy ending. And she became a drug addict to 
hardcore drugs because she says she, she, she just needs a way of escape. Wow, that hurt my feelings. It hurt my heart. It hurt my soul. You know? And God could deliver you from that prison that you are in mentally, spiritually, whatever it is. You know? So, I'll just say a quick prayer to anyone that's watching this and um, if they, you guys ever been hurt like that. I just pray peace over you guys and yeah, so let's start praying, okay? Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for whoever's watching this video, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you bring, Lord, peace to their lives, oh, Father God. That you deliver them, Father God, from all pain and all hurt and all betrayal, Father God, that they ever been through, Father God. And I just pray, Lord, that they, that they lay down their worries to you, oh, Father God. And I just pray, Lord, that you start healing them, Father God, whoever's watching this, Lord. Um, I just pray that you heal them, Lord, their hearts, their souls, oh, Father God, that they might release, Lord, forgiveness over the persons that have harmed them, Father God. And I just pray healing over them, Lord. Those wounds, Father God, that only you could deal with, Lord, that only you could see, Heavenly Father, and that no matter what, that they know that you love them and that they're worthy and that they're loved. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. So, God bless you guys. And um, if you guys have any questions, you guys can email me at karinostorio71 at gmail.com. Or um, if you have something to say, you guys could just leave it down in the comment section. And yeah, guys, God bless you guys. And I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. God bless.